As the prophet of esports, I rely on trustworthy and meaningful data every day. Data from our research partner, YouGov, offers the most complete view of esports fans and gamers in the world, providing context to who they are, what they think, the brands they buy, and things they do. YouGov's connected insights and research services inform strategy at every level. If you're a team, a brand, agency, or rights holder, you should be talking with YouGov. Their partners measure and maximize ROI and are telling compelling stories with data. Visit yougov.com slash gaming dash esports to learn more. Um, anyways, uh, mm. I don't know if you guys have, have other fun gaming stories from the week, but um, we do have a great guest today, an, an amazing guest. Who's the guest? Uh, near and dear to, to my heart. Uh, near and dear to the to the business of esports and holodeck, my business and the whole bit, um, and it's none other than uh, Jimmy Mondal, who is uh, as of yesterday sort of officially announced the executive producer and host of all the content we're doing at Holodeck Media. Jimmy, welcome to the Business of Esports podcast. Thank you for having me. It's been a long time coming, but I'm happy to finally be here <laughs> and to uh, share this time and space with you all. And and so for fans of the business of esports, especially, they may have seen you on the live stream because you've made some appearances on the live stream. Uh, but this episode of the podcast is going to be all about you here, Jimmy. And uh, <laughs> and I think it will be interesting uh, because I think, you know, there's a lot of people maybe who have seen you uh, around, you know, hosting things in esports and in gaming. But I think for our audience, it would be helpful if you could give them just some of your background, how you got into gaming, uh, why you got into gaming, you know, um, what some of the things you've done in the past are, because I think you have a really interesting kind of uh, trajectory of how you got to Holodeck here. And um, yeah, some of the some of the Jimmy Mondel story. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's definitely been a uh, adventurous path, to say the least. There's been lots of ups and downs, but <clears throat> it all really started with my brother when I was younger. Um, he's 11 years older than myself. And so that is a lot of difference, right? Especially when you're developing as a child. So when he was a teenager, I was always a little kid that was hanging out behind him um, and just wanting to see whatever my brother was doing, right? Always, always, always. So <clears throat> a lot of what he was doing back in the day was Dungeon Keeper and CS 1.6. Um, and so, you know, we had just like a crash windows 98 like 95 or me i don't even remember what operating system it was and um i remember spending hours 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 just playing games with my brother and my sister um even running through diablo 2 that was one of the first games that we actually got to play as a, a family unit as a group me my sister and my brother my sister would be the sorceress my brother was the paladin and i'd be the barbarian running in first you know just dying over and over again but that's just kind of what you do right um so yeah way back when just started off with um first person shooters. And then I really picked back up in like 2013, 2012 with more Counter-Strike and um, took it pretty seriously. I found this passion for first person shooters and, you know, throughout high school and middle school, just kept polishing it, played a lot of Condition Zero, um, even offline, just grinding this game for whatever reason. I think just because deep in my mind, it was like a childhood memory, you know, so it was a safe space. I'd always go back to Condition Zero. Um, and then when Counter-Strike Global Offensive came out, I took it really seriously and um, grinded that out pretty much to hit the highest rank in the game, Global Elite. Um, and at that point, I was really considering competing for a long time. Um, and because I wanted to compete so bad, I did. So I competed a lot in Tier 2 tournaments. And through time, I you know ended up watching a lot of the tournaments that I played in, not only to review my VOD, but you know just to see myself on screen. I was like, that's cool. That's really cool. Um, and I realized over time that a lot of these commentators that were talking about Counter-Strike and Overwatch and these other games kind of just didn't know what they were talking about at all. I would listen to them and be like, you know, if you play soccer or if you play football and then you watch a football match, you know what to listen for in commentary. What are the important things? What are the things they're missing? And so I realized very early on that, wow, a lot of these commentators know really nothing about the game and they're just leading the audience on a wild goose chase and hoping for the best and just saying a lot without saying anything. Um, so I bet my friends that we could do it better. And so we did, we just formed a group and, um, 
started casting Overwatch because that's when that game came out, probably 2015 or 2016, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, and we wanted to be the first people in on it, right? You want to ride that first wave of esports hype to try and get into the leagues and get set up. We all know how Overwatch went. It took them over a year to get leagues set up, and then they nixed their entire Tier 2 and Tier 3 scene in one fell swoop and completely disabled and crippled their scene for the future five years. But, of course, we can talk about that later. But spent a lot of time commentating, um, worked my way to commentating at the Microsoft Store on Fifth Avenue where I was able to commentate to a live audience, um, got connected with Mixer, did lots of events out there. And that was great. And eventually I got scouted just by virtue of being in New York and being in commentary at the Microsoft store, got scouted by a production company working with Frederator on their YouTube content and spent over a year and a half, close to two years working on building out the leaderboard, which is uh, Frederator's prime YouTube um, channel, which has over 2 million subscribers at this point in time. And we pursued a passion project with esports, which unfortunately fizzled out. Um, because of you know the space and understanding of the space was such so fetal at that stage right like a couple of years ago right now everyone's really starting to understand esports in its grand scheme and where it can go and what it can be but for a lot of time it was the wild west and people really had no idea what they were doing but they were like we want to be in games and so they were in games um but you know one experience led to another ended up working with quibi uh, and polygon after working on Cheddar Esports for about uh, a year and a half as well. And, you know, from doing live productions every single day with Cheddar Esports to working on short form content with Quibi and Polygon, now finding myself with Holodeck Media, doing all sorts of content all over the place. Um, but a lot of exciting things coming out in the next couple of months. So weird story for sure. Lots of ups and downs, lots of side trips. But um, here we are. <laughs>